So how did you know that you wanted to do hair professionally? How did you know that this was your passion? Um, well, when I was younger, high school days, um, I, would, yeah, ah. <laughs> I would do my own hair, I mm -hmm. would do my friend's hair, and I always had a niche for doing it, so it was one of those things that I enjoyed doing. So when I did my first year at LIU for nursing, um, I did my prerequisites. I wasn't as focused as I should have been, and of course I don't want to waste money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I said, hey, you know, why not? Let me try it. I love doing it. Let's see what happens. And um, I had that conversation with my dad. And he was just like, well, if you're going to do it, you got to do it all the way. I don't want to hear any excuses. Right. So um, I went ahead. I enrolled. I started the process. And as I began to learn more about hair and, you know, see all of the different avenues I could take with doing hair, it just became, you know, it just right there in my face. It's like, this is what you need to do. This is okay. what you should be doing. So, And I enjoyed, you know, making my friends feel beautiful, like I felt so good after I did my hair, so it was, it was definitely something that just was, it was there, but I just didn't realize it until I made that effort to say, okay, I'm going to college, I'm going to do this, do that, and it's just like, no, this is not right. for you. Yeah. Are these your eyelashes? Mm -hmm. Like I have mascara. You've <laughs> always had eyelashes for freaking days, now I remember I'm like, wait, you got like doll fucking lashes they're like you should see my little brother tarantula lashes he could just kill for those lashes what would you say is something that you don't like about doing hair like is there anything about this that you wish you can change around or um no i love um everything from beginning to end from when my career started about mm -hmm. me going to beauty school even the people that I've worked with, whether it was a good situation or a difficult situation, um, everything is a learning process. And, you know, I love the flexibility of my schedule. I love the clients that I work with from celebrity to my everyday working women. Like, all of my clients are celebrities to me. You know, right. I treat them all with the same respect. I, I do everything I can possible to make sure that they're happy, no matter what status you are. That's mm -hmm. not important to me. Um, so I, I absolutely love everything about my career and all of the experiences, you know, that I come across and the people that I meet. I love I love it all. So, for those that don't know, mm -hmm. what exactly is it that you do? Um, I'm a freelance hairstylist. I have celebrity hairstylist as a lot of people like to say <laughs> um i've worked with the likes of alicia keys marcia ambrosius um for those of you who are familiar with adrian bailon i love adrian bailon <laughs> did you what <laughs> i've had the opportunity to work with naomi campbell um for the rachel zoe project that episode mm -hmm. she was on it was a little while back um, i cater to my everyday working women um i do extensions i'm all over the place from borough to borough doing in home services for my clients and mm -hmm. you know just making the best of you know my career and loving every minute of it that's good so what would you say is something that you learned the hard way along the way um I would have to say I've always been the type to know that you need a level of professionalism mm -hmm. and but sometimes depending on who you're working with you might say okay we're cool like it's not mm -hmm. just work like we can laugh we can talk you know we go out after work and we go eat or we you know things like that and then that kind of there becomes a gray area mm -hmm. and you kind of fall into that oh well you know we're friends but even though I work for him or her you know as an assistant you know but we're cool like no you know you should Pump the brakes right. as soon as you start to feel like, you know, it's getting more into a, we're cool, then I'm, I'm just your assistant. Okay. Um, so I had an experience like that where, you know, I worked um, for a, it's a very talented um, individual. But um, in the beginning when I met her, you know, she was super cool and I would rave about her to everyone. And then I found myself, you know, being in that cool state. Like, yeah, you're my boss. But then it was like, but we're cool. But no, mm -hmm. it should be like, you're my boss, I'm your assistant, and that's how we should keep it. Right. So um, definitely maintaining a level of professionalism is very important because you don't want to get burnt in the end either or feel like, you know, but I thought, you know, you were completely different when I first met you and now you did a full 360. Like, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely want to protect yourself, protect your feelings, protect your career, your reputation. 
So I would say that that's definitely something that I learned the hard way. Okay. Yeah. What have what gems have you picked up along the way? Like, what have you learned about being um, your own brand? Because it's not like you work for a salon, so you mm-hmm. have to maintain the salon's image and portray that to clients. Like, what do you what have you learned about being your own brand? Um, I would have to say that you have to stick to. You would have you you need to maintain again the level of professionalism your work speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. So when you produce, you need to produce the same work over and over. Right. You can't slack off. Um, And I know with a lot of stylists, that's what happens. And I've gained a few clients from stylists who have slacked off, you know, and who, you know, they don't give you the same level of work that they used to. They become sloppy. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely maintaining um, your your effort in your work is very important um not slacking and giving your clients 100 percent, 110 percent um going above and beyond for your clients um because it it shows and they appreciate that and she drove to my house in the gas shortage people yeah this is post hurricane sandy, sandy. <laughs> what's her name sally sandy sandy i'm pulling all types of things that shit when she ravaged new york we're Three hours on the gas line, and she yeah, drove to my house to do my hair. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so what else, what would be one of the rules that you wouldn't break? Um, one of the rules that I wouldn't break, I would have to say being honest with your clients. You must be honest with your clients um, when it comes to hair care, when it comes to questions that they have for you. Just taking care of them in the same light you would your other clients. Like, all of them are equally important. You know, if there's something going on with their hair, you know, don't let it slide and let them feel like everything is okay Okay. with their hair if it's not. Um, You have to be upfront, be honest, and let them know what's really going on. And they'll appreciate that more because at least now you can take the necessary steps to say this is what we're going to do next Mm -hmm. to fix the problem or to get you back to where you were. Or even Mm -hmm. if you have new clients that come in, um, not selling them a dream. You know, if clients come in and, you know, you have a client, for instance, who might have two strands of hair, it's right. hard to be like, okay, I'm not a magician, but this is what we can try to do. You know, because a lot of clients, sometimes they get that false hope from some stylists and they're like, oh yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then at the end of it, it doesn't look the way they expect it. Mm-hmm. So if you're honest with them from the get-go and you say, this is the best thing for you at this point this is what we need to do. And I think they appreciate that more than you trying to make something out of magic right. that's really not, you know, number one, feasible for them, or it's just not for them. Each client is an individual, and you have to customize your services to your clients. Mm-hmm. So what type of hair products do you personally like to use the most? Like, I know you're natural, I'm natural. Mm-hmm. What as a natural woman, do you like using on your hair? And do you like um, to, you know, suggest other natural shoes? I love the, it's a newer line. It's called Macadamia Natural Oil. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing for hair repair. If you have natural hair, for you need moisture, it's good for that. If you have damaged hair due to chemical processes like relaxers and um, coloring, it's definitely great to give you that hydration that you're looking mm-hmm. for. The line has deep repair treatments. It has leave-in conditioner, shampoo conditioners um miracle oil as they call it and i absolutely love it and their products smell amazing <laughs> smell is always important i love smell good products so um that's definitely my favorite line right now and um i throw additional products in there as far as like anti-frizz products let's say from john frida i love mm-hmm. their anti-frizz serums their leave-in um conditioners um so there are a few products but my staple product is the macadamia natural oil okay what is something that you find women tend to consistently do to their hair that they think might be helping Mm -hmm. that isn't helping or what are some things that you find your clients tend to do to damage their hair that they may not really know are bad for things that are bad for their hair that they may not really know Mm -hmm. um one of my biggest things is that i get clients who come in and you may tell them well your hair needs to trim and they're like, no, I just got it trimmed four months ago. <laughs> like, four months ago is a little too long. Um, so then they're very attached to their hair. Mm-hmm. And I know for for most women, it's like, you know, I only want you to take off a slither. If right. You don't cut it. Um, 
but you know you have to talk to them and let them know the benefits of trimming your hair on a regular basis and you know the the pros and cons of trimming your hair of the, the pros of trimming your hair and then the cons of not trimming your hair um so for most women once you sit down and you actually explain why it is you need to trim your hair more often they tend to get it but they're still a little squeamish right but they let you do what you need to do because you make them feel comfortable mm -hmm. so not trimming it your ends for a extended period of time can is worse for you than anything else i mean your split ends they just creep up 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 how get often do you up. suggest that you trim your um hair? every three months Oh wow, Jesus. <laughs> every three months, and every three months is more or less just dusting the ends. Because okay. if the end starts to split a little bit and you dust it, it's gone. Right, and you figure it'll consistently grow. Exactly. So you definitely want to make sure you keep your ends clean and try to, you know, avoid, you know, as much heat as possible. You, you need to make sure that you're using heat on a minimal basis if you can. I know all of our hair textures are different. Mm -hmm. We require different things, but um, definitely stay away from that heat damage too. Okay. So is that just for natural and rela or relaxed, or is it for, like, um, is that... that... That would be overall, because okay. even if your hair is natural, yes, with your hair being natural, it can definitely take a lot, but at the same time, over time, you'll start to see the mm -hmm. damaging effects from what you're doing to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so natural women should trim their hair yes. the same as relaxed? Yes, they should, because Thank you for putting our it hair there. tends to be drier. Mm -hmm. when it's natural too so you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping your ends clean and it's healthy when you do your twist outs and it's natural and curly it looks healthy and yes. it shines and it's i found that they look my twist outs look better when my ends look better exactly. because you have a great twist pattern until so you get to the end and then you've got it's fuzz frizzy. and they just yeah. tacky yeah. not not mm -hmm. on not on 100 yeah what are some tips that you have for natural woman i'm natural i'm sorry for all you relaxed beauties out there we'll get to you in a second but this uh this blowout this silk is smooth right silk here is <laughs> this isn't what i usually do i usually do actually mm -hmm. my hair is usually curly so what are some things that you suggest for um natural hair care definitely one of the biggest things that i find with women who are natural is that they have um really really dry hair and again mm -hmm. that's from not trimming your hair um as often as you should and not moisturizing it as much as you should but one thing that i do realize with um a lot of african-american women especially is like when they go to sleep at night they're not really taking precaution as to well do i have a silk pillowcase and am mm -hmm. i sleeping with a silk bonnet and usually when you sleep on cotton, cotton will suck the natural oils out of your hair. So right. it makes your hair drier. So it's definitely good to have a satin bonnet or a silk pillowcase before you lay your hair down at night. Yes. <laughs> I've uh, fallen prey to that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to invest in a silk pillowcase because the bonnet, I feel like it mashes yes. my hair. So uh, one thing that I've seen, I tend to find people, women that can do like, oh, this is day five of this twist out mm -hmm. and it's all full and the curls are beautiful like how would you suggest maintaining a natural style without mm -hmm. having Growing to manipulate it, it mm -hmm. too much the next day um definitely having a spray bottle mm -hmm. misting it um is the best thing that you can do and actually then putting like a leave-in product just running it through lightly to give it you know that moist that shine that hydration mm -hmm. um but not necessarily having to every day drench your hair with water to get it to curl just misting it lightly to preserve your, your twist out will definitely help revive it okay yeah what about um a change in care from because we're transitioning now into mm -hmm. winter time yeah so are there any things that i should be doing differently to my hair now you definitely winter? need a lot more hydration um and deep conditioning treatments mm -hmm. you definitely need to do that even on a weekly basis if you can mm -hmm. definitely deep condition Keep deep conditioning treatments and um, a leave-in, definitely a leave-in product. If you haven't been using one before, you definitely Yeah, I do a lot to. of leave-ins because yeah. I do a lot of co-washing. Mm -hmm. It's just I know that I, personally, I need to do a lot more deep, deep conditioning. Yeah. What about pre-pooing? How do you feel about pre-pooing? Um, what do you mean pre-pooing? Like when you do, um, what do you call it? Um, like, it took me a while. To, like, I always knew what it was in theory, but mm -hmm. like doing, for example... Carol's daughter, Carol's daughter has the uh, Manoy mask that I just learned you're supposed to put on before the shampoo. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to use the hair mask, you let that, like you saturate your hair with that, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a deep conditioner, but then you shampoo it. Mm -hmm. And then you can do like your conditioner and business as usual. I know a lot of women will do, um, they'll put oils in their hair mm -hmm. or they'll do um, 
conditioners or they'll do a concoction of whatever, mm -hmm. but it's all before they shampoo their hair. Exactly. This way it'll, I guess, disentangle it or it gives you less, or it gives you more to strip your hair so that mm -hmm. you're not stripping the moisture out of your hair. Exactly. It puts more on there. Yeah, so it's good because you're, what you're doing is you're, you're double conditioning, okay. which is not a bad thing. Uh, what you want to avoid are anything that has too much protein because protein mm -hmm. can cause your hair to snap if you're using too much because you're infusing too much into it. Okay. Um, so definitely doing um, that theory as far as doing a conditioner before or pre-treatment before you shampoo and then a deep conditioning treatment, it's good because you're, you're just adding double hydration to your hair, which mm -hmm. is necessary.